As you mentioned, John Marvin in the red corner. Kingsley Akoyley in the blue. And Haringate. And, uh, timekeeper Mr. Tony Treacy brings the bells to start round number one. And instantly, real height and reach discrepancy between these two, John. Yeah, I mean, you see, stitched across the front of Kingsley's shorts is, in other words, fat boy. Perhaps uh, an indicator that he is he is a small middleweight. I'm often surprised to see him at this in this weight category. You think he might be due moving down, but he's a regular fixture in this competition and a regular at middleweight. And as we saw in the last bout, sometimes the smaller man can do quite well. Kingsley's been bobbing and moving, getting low. And that makes him elusive for the taller man. I suppose it will make John Marvin have to punch downwards a lot. And may mean that the hands are lower as he throws. Will mean the hands are lower as he throws. And there you see a counter left hook land by Kingsley Akoyley. And uh, just dips to the left, throws a little sharp left hook into the body. But we're seeing Marvin using his right uppercut, which is the shot you want against the short man who's ducking forward. And the danger is that the Kings Lee is going to duck just like them into the right uppercut. And he measures it with a jab. And well, I think he hits just on the break there. Probably just looked at the referees as if to say, you're going to allow that. But uh, nothing was said. So they box on. Nice body shot from Marvin. And Coyley right in there. And Coyley can kind of, kind of bowls over his right and then lands with a pretty hefty smack. But. Marvin doesn't look like he's been too troubled by it. It's a nice jab from John Martin as he moves around to his left hand side and Coyley attacks to the body. Two or three thumps to the side of the head. And again, that lead right uppercut just crashes in, just measures it with a jab. Such long arms from Martin, but Coyley just keeping this one. Nice and short, and he's had too many problems getting on the inside so far. You see Martin doing what you would expect, just keeping the jab long, trying to maintain the distance between himself and Kingsley Akoyli. Nice right hand left hook combination from the man in the red corner. That left hook kind of rocked him back on his heels, didn't it? Maybe a sign of power from the army man. A good one too as well. Kindly though, he's experienced. He should know how to look after himself. That may mean that was a good sort of leaping <laughs> switch right hook. So Kingsley Akoli at this weight has got his cut work cut out for him a little bit. We, uh, see John Martin there just taking on a bit of water and looks pretty calm in the corner, as does Akoli. We say his, uh, his aim will be to close his man down, work on the inside and through a few nice counter shots and a couple of right hands over the top. But Really, there's, uh, there's height and reach discrepancy, and then there's height and reach discrepancy, and this is about the, the top end of the the spectrum as far as short and tall go, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure if uh, Marvin is, is a particularly big middleweight. I'm more, I think, Akali is a very short one, but he is very experienced and should know how to look after himself in there, so you might see him jumping in a bit more and getting into clinches, just he'll be safer and more more composed perhaps on the inside whereas the army's taller Marvin just wants to, to stay at range keep him on the end of long straight shots nice jabs from John Marvin there he just moves around to his left hand side right hand counter thrown by Coyley but that one comes off the gloves in keeping with amateur tradition throughout the last three days the first round is a little bit quieter and the tempo raises in the second. Let's hook to the body from Marvin. And the 
again. That's lead right uppercut. And he just sort of touches the jab to the head of a coily to measure the distance and then thumps that right hand in. And it's, uh, well, shot. He won't have the luxury of throwing against many opponents, but as you mentioned, the height of a coily means that it is the perfect shot to throw. A nice clubbing right hand. McCoyley landed though that McCoyley just jabbing to the body and then clinching. So it's uh, another Haringey boxer in the final. And as we mentioned, Nicola Adams is a winner of this competition. A standout performer. From the club and she went on to uh, London 2012 success <laughs> now Martin opening up with a few nice combinations she moves off with a jab he is making it tough in there for a coily. Every now and again, he's been sinking in these sort of hard bursts. Even his right hook little, looks like it's got some power on it. There's a nice lead right hand over the top there. And here is corner man Brian John. Just watching on. Just calmly delivering a few instructions ringside. Jerry Wilmot alongside him, two of the organizers of the competition. That was a nice right hand on the inside from a coily. John Marvin took it extremely well. Did click the chin from right to left. Just every now and again, as Marvin's happily punching away, he gets caught out by a hook or two looping over the top. Do you think that is the danger of getting a little bit too comfortable in the middle of a bout, John, is that you suddenly can leave yourself open when you least expect it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just at the end there. Probably right shot in, but Marvin hasn't looked badly hurt in any great stage, so I'm not sure if cody has got the power to make the most of those successes he has. Well, certainly a measure of composure in the corner of John Marvin there on the left of your screen in the red vest. Taking some deep breaths in, and wow, it must be mentally and physically exhausting three days because it's not just the three or four rounds that the competitors we see are boxing in the ring. That probably is something that they're well used to in training and something that they do most days in the gym, but the weigh-in, the warming up, the warming down, the getting the adrenaline spike before about must really take it out of you, and I'm sure we'll see some exhausted competitors as the action starts to wind down this evening. Especially as these are long days, so if you're waiting all day, it must be hard just to keep yourself relaxed, figure out the right time to warm up. So you're sharp, not not drained, not letting the nervous energy get to you as well. well it hasn't been too long a wait for these lads, and that was scheduled for three o'clock. So well on time in terms of competitors in and out of the ring so by and large the boxers will know when they're on and will be able to warm themselves up accordingly so it's not a complete guessing game in terms of the schedule it's been fantastically well organized competition on the whole over the last three days we spoke about the, the teething problems in the quarterfinals 400 competitors all boxing in one evening. I mean, that is quite some feat, and really, it ran over till sort of midnight, one o'clock. But it's got to be expected, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I think you know, everyone wants the chance to compete in this. Everyone wants to win it, and so you're sort of stuck in that conundrum. If you're going to get everyone about that you can, it's going to be a long late night. That's a pretty remarkable job by the organisers. Aaron Gay, it's only a small club, and yet they're organising this massive event. With even more boxers entering it, the major international tournaments. And that's put their club firmly on the map, and they're being well represented by Kingsley Coyley. But he's up against a well schooled opponent in John Marvin here, and he looks a little bit tired there, Coyley, as he steps forward. He's been pushed to the floor. 
Marvin back to work behind his jab, starting to really thud those rights in behind the guard. Nikoyli hangs on again. Do you think he's been hurt at all there? Well, Nikoyli, he just, he sort of, you know, those right hands do look hurtful, and you see a jab there go in. But when Nikoyli gets inside, he's really smothering Marvin. Taking the sting out of Marvin's work, so. Kingsley's done this many times before. This is his home turf, so. And that was nice from Coyley there. Just slipped to the right hand side, bang the uppercut into the body, then a left hook. Again, Martin just back behind the jab. Wild with the uppercut off the back of it, though, that time. Just in danger of looking slightly ragged, and he's caught with a nice right hand over the top of the, uh, the jab. And then back to work, and John Marvin's put a lot into this. And he's boxed extremely well, but Coyle is still in front of him, and that can be a bit disheartening when you have hit somebody with pretty much everything you've got, and they're still there, and they're still coming forward, and they're still throwing punches. He's exactly, only just weird his way beneath your jab and suddenly catching him. Marvin was the better performer overall, but you know, Kingsley Akali had a pretty decent third round. And on third, he was doing, he was often doing what he wanted to, to what he wanted to. Well, terrific action, and both men giving a good account of themselves in that 75 kilo Class A final. And we'll find out who the winner is just a few moments' time. If you are watching this on the web, LondonLive.co.uk. Now back in the studio on the main channel. So keep watching and we'll be back on there shortly with a ringside interview with the winner. And a few highlights as well. We hope you've enjoyed the action so far. We'll be with you in the next bout in a few minutes' time.